In this video, I'll try to present Google Brain's paper, CodeNet, Marrying Convolution and Attention for All Data Sizes. This paper is another attempt to combine attention and convolution in the hopes of creating an architecture that incorporates the best features of each. CNNs are one of the most effective learning algorithms for comprehending and interpreting image content with excellent results in image segmentation, classification, detection, and retrieval. Since the introduction of Transformer Architecture in 2017 and its huge success in NLP tasks, many researchers have tried to bring this fascinating architecture to the realm of computer vision. One of the most recent attempts of incorporating transformers into computer vision was the vision transformer model. In my video on the paper, An Image is Worth 16 by 16 Words, I go through this model in great depth. One of the main limitations of vision transformer was the lack of translation equivariance property. So, when an image is shifted a little bit to the right, the model will have trouble identifying it. Thus, in order to outperform CNNs, Vision Transformer had to be trained on huge datasets of hundreds of millions of images. Although self-attention, which the Transformer architecture is built upon, also has a couple of great properties that we'd like to have in a computer vision model. First property is self-attention's input adaptive weighting. Unlike convolution kernels, which are static and input independent, attention weights are dynamic and may change according to the input. This property helps the model to better understand complicated relationships in the input. The second advantageous property of self-attention is its global receptive field. Simply put, it means that in one glance, self-attention can see the entire image, while CNNs usually don't. The major goal of this article is to combine CNNs and self-attention in order to create something that incorporates the best of both worlds. Because of its similarities with transformer architecture, authors of this paper chose depth-wise convolution as a preferred flavor of convolution layer. Also, both depth-wise convolution and self-attention can be expressed as a per-dimension weighted sum of values in a predefined receptive field. Here convolution relies on a fixed kernel to gather information from a local receptive field. And as I said earlier, self-attention allows the receptive field to be global, and instead of fixed kernels, it utilizes dynamic attention weights that vary based on the inputs. Here's the self-attention formula. If it does not look familiar to you, I recommend you watch my video on the paper Attention is All You Need, in which I cover self-attention mechanism as well. Anyway, in order to mix convolution and self-attention, we can simply add a global aesthetic convolution kernel with the adaptive attention matrix just before the softmax normalization. So in other words, attention weights are decided by a combination of a CNN kernel and an adaptive attention matrix. This formula, interestingly, corresponds to a special variant of attention called relative self-attention, in which relative position representations are used. This type of self-attention is subject of another paper, and it has been presented in full detail in a video by AI Coffee Break with Letitia. But since it plays an important role in the CodeNet model, I'll explain it as well. Original transformer introduced in Attention is All You Need used index-based positional encodings that was utilizing a sinusoidal function. Each token's index in a sentence is preserved with this method. In relative position representation method, on the other hand, only relative position matters. For example, when you want to calculate the self-attention weights, for second and last words. You have to count the number of words between these two, which in this case is three. Then you'd have to look up a table in which weights for each possible distance is stored. As you can see in this table, when our sentence has five words, this table contains nine weights. If we had n words in our sentence, this table would contain two times n minus one items. 
Also, notice that the same weights W3 will be used for each and every time we are calculating self-attention for words with distance of 3. Using the same principles, we can bring the relative position representation to two-dimensional space and use it on images. Consider this 2 pixel by 2 pixel image. Following the logic in 1D relative position encodings, we should make a 3x3 three three table to store our weights. In order to find the correct weight from the table, we should calculate distance between two pixels both horizontally and vertically. For example, distance between green and blue square would be 1 in x-axis and minus 1 in y-axis. Then using the table, we can find the corresponding weight. As you can see, this table of weights is somehow like a convolution kernel. In each head of self-attention module, a distinctive weight table will be used. So far, we have found the best combination of self-attention and convolution, but we still can't use our new found architecture on images directly. Why? Because self-attention has a fundamental problem. It's computation hungry and has a quadratic complexity in both space and time. If you want to calculate self-attention weights in an image, we should calculate an attention weight for each possible pair of pixels. Which means for an ordinary selfie like one you can see here, which has about 8 million pixels, we should calculate more than 60 trillion attention weights. Authors of this paper suggest using several layers of CNN to reduce the dimensions of the image before we fit them to our coordinate relative attention layers. But in what order should we do it? The authors tried different combinations of layers. From the one that only had convolutional layers, to the ones that ended up with one, two, or three transformer blocks. These models were compared using two factors. First factor is generalization, which indicates whether the model is able to learn efficiently on a smaller data sets. This is an area where vision transformer fails miserably. On the other hand, models that use more convolutional layers perform better. Second factor is model capacity. A model with a high capacity will get better results on large data sets but a model with a low capacity will not improve with extremely large datasets. While pure convnets don't seem to perform well on huge datasets, a mix of transformers and convolution appears to be the best option. Based on these results, the authors chose to use three convolutional layers followed by two relative self-attention layers. How does this model pay off in experiments? By the time this video was recorded, CodeNet was still the state-of-the-art model on ImageNet dataset. And compared with other models with same number of parameters, CodeNet performs better. Because of the beneficial inductive biases, CodeNet inherits the excellent generalization characteristic of ConvNets in the low data regime. Furthermore, when given a large amount of data, CodeNet not only benefits from the greater scalability of transformer models, but also achieves faster convergence and therefore increased efficiency. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video educational and informative. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.